That's right, it's Moto Monday, guys. Welcome back. This Moto Monday, we're going to be carrying over basically from last Moto Monday's topic, which was recession equals war. And we're going to be discussing my my viral video from this last week and just kind of giving some response to a lot of the people in those and leaving the comments because I thought they were, some were good. There was a lot of thought put behind some, and a lot of them were just regurgitating anti-war propaganda, and a lot of them were just honestly talking shit. And so I wanted to address those people uh, and their thoughts and kind of where they were coming from and where I'm coming from, just so that there's not any sort of like confusion. Um, and I really wanted to kind of discuss it on the grander scheme of things and, and why I made the post, right? Because in the, in the caption, I say, you know, I'm posting this so people don't forget what it takes for them to live the way they do, right? And this is just, uh, this is just, uh, you know, it's it's this big picture, right? That people are kind of like moving past, and there there's tons of parts to it, right? It's it, war is not simple, um, war is not easy, and war happens for so many different reasons. A lot of those reasons are, you know, especially for America, we're securing our interests all over the world in all sorts of different ways, right? Now, one well, thing I've been trying to like help people get to and step out of their box in is that you know. As a U.S. citizen, as an American, right, when if our economy falls to a certain point, right, and let's say we use war, which we do often, you get, going back to our last Moto Monday video, almost every time we have a recession, we go to war. And there's a reason for that. It's because the war, war gives a boost to a demand in our economy, right? And so when we have spending at, and, and yes, we can spend, X amount of money in multiple different sectors of our economy, and it can produce similar effect. However, with war, right, we're really good at war. <laughs> that's that's one thing we've realized is that we are really good at war. We understand how to use war to fix our economy. We understand how to make money there. We are one of the largest uh, providers of defense materials in the world, right? We support tons and tons of tons of other countries with the things they need to, you know, protect themselves as a country. <laughs> like, it, it's massive. It is massive. It's one of the largest industries on the planet. The, the business of war is massive. Um, and so we're going to take, we're going to, we're going to take part in that. We're going to secure interests. We're going to do all these other things. There's all these other back-end things that, like, the average American every day does not see and does not understand, right? And so for a lot of people commenting, they're like, oh, this has nothing, I don't see them invading, I don't see the Taliban invading the U.S. No, the Taliban will probably never invade the U.S. And while I say that, you know, like, whether it be the Taliban or some other, you know, major world, first world country, if we go to war, it's to prevent that, them from coming here, right? Whether, however you feel about 9-11, right? 9-11 did happen, right? Terrorists, whoever they were, flew planes and killed thousands of Americans in the blink of an eye, Right? We don't want more of that here. So potentially, yes, we take the fight to them wherever they are and try to shut that down and try to prevent them from being able to like rise up and do things. Same with any other war that we start, right? It's, it's to keep people from coming here to attack us. Now, again, I don't see the Taliban invading us anytime soon. Again, with that said, though, look at our southern border. We're seeing tens, hundreds of thousands of people crossing a year and now it's up to like the millions we have like, we have like five i think over five million people correct me if i'm wrong but i, be, I believe it's over five million people in the last uh, couple of years across the border and they're already saying that there are they're like monthly they're stopping or they know that there have been terror like known terrorists on the, on the terrorist watch list who have like made it over the border and have not been caught there are ones that have been caught and ones that haven't been caught so i mean to, at some level we are being invaded by terrorists so you know <laughs> and it's because of a, a lack of of infrastructure and a lack of uh priority on on that situation now that's getting a little off topic but i just wanted to you know kind of broaden the spectrum as much as we can here so again when we go to war if if the american economy like we're in a recession right we all hurt from recession. We're all paying more at the pump. We're all paying more for groceries. We're all, and we can feel it right now. As we sit here talking about this, we're feeling it right now, 
right? We're in a recession. And I mean, it's, it's a pretty you know, stark parallel. You look at, we left Afghanistan right after we left Afghanistan, after being in a two decade war, we immediately go into recession because the war is what was upholding our economy because of our spending, because of how many jobs it created. Look at World War II, right? Again, going back to last Monday, we came from the Great Depression, right? We basically ended the Great Depression with World War II, right? We came out of World War II with like a 96% increase in, uh, in our industrial side and our economy was absolutely booming after World War II, right? We've always used war to go do these things. Now, the other thing is, and this is kind of, again, going broader spectrum, and even going back to uh, uh, Cornelius Tectus, right, from, uh, I can't, and I don't know the exact date that he mentioned it, but he was around during the Roman Empire, and he, you know, he's a, he was one of, you know, one of our greatest historians ever. Um, and he said that, Great empires are not maintained by timidity. Now, that's true for America. We are a great empire. So are other large countries like Russia. And China. There are great empires. That, I mean, whether we agree or disagree with their, the way that they're run is, is whatever. But the fact of the matter is we are a huge, you know, massive, great empire as a country. And it takes a lot to maintain that, that place and maintain the wants and needs or desires of the people that that live in our country, right? The reason why we get to walk down the street and live mostly carefree, comparatively, I'm saying this especially comparatively to other places, you know, and, and to have the opportunities that we have at our fingertips to maintain that level so that we stay passive, right, as a as a populace, takes a lot. It takes blood, sweat, and tears, and war. It does. No great empire is maintained by timidity. We have to be out there taking other resources. Now, if the U.S. was like, oh, we're going to go on a, on, a, on a spree, if they just told the American people, like, oh, we're going to go do this in 2023, we're going to go take over Canada and take over Mexico and take over our, our neighboring countries, and we're just going like, to start you know, invading and actually taking over places, there's no way the American people would be okay with that, right? Right. I mean, like, but realistically, to keep things going, sometimes you have to go in and take resources. So what do they do? They manufacture a reason sometimes. Yeah, I don't agree with it. I'm not saying that, like, we shouldn't be able to figure out some other way, but that's the easiest way. It's the fastest way. Right. And it's and while it is somewhat of a lie. Right. There are there are parts of it that are good. Like there are the, like the, the the Saddam regime in Iraq was terrible. It was terrible. Like when we invaded Iraq, there was places where we had troops coming over into the into Iraq, and they would come across like kids that were just left to die by the regime. Like and not and not just a few kids. I mean, like you would go into a building and uh, there was this uh, locked grate on the ground. And it, underneath the grade, there was, like, a, a stairwell down to, like, the basement of this larger building. And there was, like, 40 kids in there from, like, one years old to, like, seven that were just left to die. You know what I mean? Like, they were not good people, right? And so, like, the, the America going into other countries does do good, right? And even in, in my last deployment, there was good that we saw that we did, right? We pushed the Taliban out of the market that they controlled, and the people around there were excited about it because they were no longer getting like in order to get into the market to even get food or anything that you needed you got taxed by the taliban so you had to give them something and then as you left the market you had to give up a percentage of whatever you bought right that's not that's tyranny right it's bad like we changed that now obviously when we left it went right back to shit because our, our exit plan was bad really bad and we didn't we i know we were trying to change an entire culture of people which you know it's, it's very hard to do um, but that doesn't mean that good didn't come from it. You know what I mean? So, and I know that I'm, I'm a little bit ranting here on like different topics, but I'm just trying to get this, again, this bigger picture of why, uh, again, we benefit and maybe, maybe even other people benefit from like the U S going in or going to war or whatever. Like, again, yes. Did we do it for economic gain for money? Absolutely. Like there are only so many reasons to go to war, right? You, are being attacked and you're defending yourself, 
you're securing your interest somewhere else or there's some like atrocity that needs to be stopped, right? And so, you know, I don't think that the average American is totally accepting of what it takes to run a large country, you know? I mean, I, 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 I might be like, very offbeat and i might catch all sorts of flack for this but it's like it's the truth man like it's it, it's not easy right and the last thing that the that the u.s government wants and this is the part that i, I i'm on i'm on i'm on our side believe it or not you know what i mean like the last thing the u.s government wants is for you know the 300 plus million americans that live in the u.s to be upset with their day-to-day -day life right we're seeing it with a recession where everyone's hurting and people are not happy imagine if it was worse. I <laughs> know. Imagine if, if, if the economy wasn't upheld by war. Imagine if we couldn't go to war. Imagine if we couldn't make the money, the money there. Right. The one thing we're really, really good at. Uh, you know. Imagine if the U.S. dollar all of a sudden collapsed. You know. Imagine if there wasn't even the healthcare that we have. Imagine if you couldn't just walk down the street to the store and get whatever you needed. Imagine if gas was twenty bucks a gallon. You know what I mean? Like you would have a completely different country, right? And there's only so many ways to, like, fix those things and maintain our spot. And yes, I know there's lots of people saying, like, oh, well, we have the reserves for this, so we can go internal. I believe that we do, right? But when you start using reserves, those run out at some point, right? So any major country is constantly trying to offset what they're using with something from somewhere else so that if shit actually hits the fucking fan, like a World War III scenario where we actually have to go internal, then we're not, we have even more to, to rest on and use than if we just started using it now and not taking it from somewhere else, right? And that's the hard truth. That's the hard reality. You know, that's the hard part of, of humanity, I guess. So like we've gotten to a point where like people are totally willing to like sit at their keyboard and talk shit with their Starbucks in their hand and their iPhone, but they're not, they're not willing to like actually take ownership of, of, of what it takes or they're so offended by seeing, you know, what I posted, right. Marines out there getting some and some paying the ultimate sacrifice that they and they get like offended. They're like, Oh, well that you, you, like, you signed up for that. Like you, you can't tell me that, that I have to live my life. No, I don't. You have to look like that. I can't tell you how to live your life. Like, no, I don't. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. What I'm trying to say is our society is broken down so far that people don't have any respect or gratitude for how good they have it, right? When you go over to those other countries and you see just how terrible it is and you get to come home and, like, live here, it is so polarizing, right, that it's there's not even words for it and then you have people that again come into the comment section of things and just like make all these extremely rude comments about shit and it's like dude when you're there especially as uh, in the military like again I, I agree like our focus isn't necessarily that that big overall goal of the u.s military or the u.s government it's for me to look to the guy to my left and right my brothers and try to get home every single day that's all it ever was right we were carrying out our mission taking our orders yeah, we were pawns, for sure. That's what you fucking sign up for the military. Everyone everyone uh, calls, call, like, I've got tons of comments saying, like, oh, you're a pawn, you're this, you're that. Like, no fucking shit. Like, did you think, what did you think I thought I was when I joined the military? I was a tool of the U.S. government, right? That's it. Like, it's not some sort of surprise. It's not some sort of, you know, like, it's not an insult. Like, I already know. We already like if you signed up for the U.S. military during a time of war, you knew what you were getting into. You knew. I'm not, and I'm not asking for a cookie. What I'm asking for is for people, the U.S. populace, to wake the fuck up and realize that you know war is not uh, what you think it is, and, and we don't go to war. We're not terrorists. We're not out there like. Just killing civilians. I've, I I can't tell you how many, how many times I had a comment on that viral video saying like, oh, well, yeah, like we might have benefited, but it didn't benefit the, the one million civilians that died. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Show me one, one study anywhere that has said that there was a million 
civilians that died. There's not one. There isn't. The, the guesstimated value of civilian death is somewhere between, like, depending on where you look, 240 to 260,000 to, at the high range, in, like, the mid-300s, which is nowhere near a million. Am I validating or saying that that loss of life is good? Absolutely not. Like, that sucks. You know what I mean? War sucks, but that's what war is. It sucks. Like, and there's going to be collateral damage. There always has been. There always will be. Right? That's what. That's why war is so. It's such a drastic move, right? So, I don't want people to like be sitting there and spewing out numbers that they just like are regurgitating anti-war propaganda when it doesn't. It doesn't line up with the truth at all. You know. Um. Yeah, like, again, the, the whole point of this video is just, I wanted to address this misnomer, you know, what, what I just said, which was, like, this million dead, that's not the truth, that's not anywhere close to true, um, and I just wanted people to take a step back, right, because right now, we all live a very cush life, thanks to our ability to reset recession, now, we were, again, we were uh, going back to my last video from Moto Monday. I went all the way back showing, talking about like the, the 1700s to now, basically. You know, we go to war, we, you know, and we use that mainly, in my opinion, to fix our economic stance. Now, in 2000, right, right before 1998, really bad recession, the economy not doing so well, even into early 2000, one that wasn't doing so well, we go, to, we go into this war. And we realized, like, oh, wow, we could stay at this for a minute. You know what I mean? So we did for two decades, over two decades, right? So we, we basically used that to uphold, you know, the demand in the market. And our economy is now coming back down because we're not at war, right? We tried to piggyback in the, on the Ukraine side, right? But that's not the same because we're not actually, like, we're not... Uh, in full force with it. So we're not, we're not seeing that kind of like that demand back on the market, right? Right now, the Ukraine thing is just like a funneling. And that I don't, I don't agree with, right? We're in a recession. The last thing we needed to do was send billions of dollars to Ukraine again. And I, I'm not, I'm not, again, validating uh, war as a whole. I'm not validating like the killing of innocents or, you know, or civilians' deaths or anything. I'm just saying that like, it's an unfortunate necessity at this point, right? Like, we've, we have to clean up portions of the world that are, that are shitty when we can. So we would do the good where we can. And the U.S. economy kind of hinges on our ability to bounce back using war. And I, I, this is just speaking from a historical standpoint. I'm just looking at the, I'm just looking at the past. I'm just saying... We have recession, we go to war, it bounces back, and then it's just been this back and forth game constantly. That's why we've been at war every every decade, right? So, yeah, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I know that was a lot of unloading, and again, I'm, again, I just wanted to make my point clear that, you know, it, while, yes, I mean, a lot of you guys were right in the comments. It is about oil. It's not about freedom. And I said nothing about your freedoms. Your freedoms are God-given. You have God-given rights. You have your freedoms. You go enjoy those freedoms. And hopefully you never have to fight for them. I don't want to see a fight for them. I don't think that we, we don't, you know, World War II, we weren't fighting for our freedoms. We didn't, we didn't get, you know, you, all, you, all, I saw tons of comments too. I'll, put, I'll say one more thing. I saw tons of comments talking about how World War II has lost how many fought for freedom. No. We've only fought for freedom one time. The Revolutionary War. And maybe, maybe you can kind of count the Civil War. We were, we were fighting for another set of freedoms. But realistically, like the, that main one would be the Revolutionary War, our freedom from, you know, all that. Like, that's really the only time. Like, World War I, we didn't get invaded. World War II, we got attacked, we didn't get invaded. It wasn't like there was, like, knocking on our doorstep, right? No, no wars have been really been about freedom. They've been about resources, our interests, our foreign interests. Uh, yes, there are politicians that, that that make money off of those things. I can, like I'm not denying that, 
right? I'm not saying that we aren't being taken advantage of. What I'm saying is that no matter how much the military is being taken advantage of, no matter, no matter how many politicians are lining their pockets with money, the average U.S. American at some level still benefits when the U.S. goes to war. Just look at the job market, right? We created like 17 million jobs in World War II. Unemployment, all-time low. So with that said, I will leave off with that. I know this was a lot of unloading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any comments, please leave them below. I will see you guys tomorrow for Tactical Tuesday. As always, stay loose, battle on. And if you bitch in your heart, it'll show.